Hi, I'm Kevin Carter, the hair artist, and this is Art Detroit. Tell me what you need It's all right here yeah. In Detroit, In Detroit. Don't matter what it is oh. It's all right here oh. Hi. Hi How are you? Good, how are you? Oh, these are good. so nice. Isn't that pretty? All the hair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How's it well, going today? Good, good. Hi, Kevin. <laughs> How's it going? We have an age perfect. Well, thank you, and neither have you. <laughs> thank you. Now, what are we doing with your hair today? Oh, Kevin, I don't know. You see, I'm looking a little rough today. I, I might let you just work your magic. Okay, well, let me get you back to the shampoo bowl. Okay. This is our future cosmetologist in the making. All right now. <laughs> Hi, <Hey>. Shayla. <laughs> <laughs> so good to see you. You too. I am excited. Wow, Kevin. A 100% human hair. 100% human hair. How did you even have the vision to do something like this? I, I love floor arrangements, flowers, and eventually I start creating them out of hair and entering hair competitions. So I said, well, maybe if I can do a floor arrangement on a head and keep it nice and light because the model has to actually wear it. I was going to ask, because this looks heavy, so this is light? It's light. I mean, it moves. Her hair swoops up into the back of it, and it gives the illusion that it's coming out of her head. They evolve. They might start out going in one direction, then you want to change it up for the next year so you're not totally doing the same right, thing over and over. Right. But this was the, what I'm known for, doing the floor arrangement. You have to learn how to balance it on their head and create the weight so it's light, not too heavy at the top. You know, right. you learn from making different mistakes. We won at the Bronner Brothers hair show with this. That's uh, a international big one. hair show, yes. Now, do you still participate in that one currently? I haven't, but I probably would do something this year because I've been sitting back for a while. So every now and then you want to come out. And you let know, them know you still and doing let them it. Know, let the younger <laughs> stylists know. We asked a friend of mine who's a designer to send us over a garment. She sent us this nice Asian inspired outfit. So I decided that we would do some fans. So that's what we're doing now. We're just going to layer some fans and kind of blend in the color. Tell me how you got started doing hair. Well, I started out doing hair because in the 70s, I used to wear the finger waves, the, the ocean waves that are back now, you know. And the story is I stayed in the salon for about eight hours one day. And I was like, I could do that myself. <laughs> you know, eight hours, I can figure out something to do with my own hair. So I bought some rollers and started rolling and practicing waving and combing my hair. And eventually I got pretty good at it. So everyone kept saying, you should go to beauty school, you should go to cosmetology school. So after about two or three years, I finally just went. Okay. And I've been doing it ever since. I've been making and designing fantasies for over 20 years. I started out with the Wolverine Cosmetologist Association. They were known for their fantasies and creativity. So what got you started into even doing these fantasy pieces? I was forced to do one to represent our chapter. And I fought against it and fought against it because I didn't want to do fantasy. I mostly wanted real hairstyle, real hair, and not so much sculpting. Right. But we had no one else to represent our chapter. So Gail Livingston forced me to do a fantasy. What was your very first fantasy piece, do you remember? Yes, it was just some waves going up in the air, and I teased some hair and placed them around it, and she was tilted to the side, and it was not what I was known for doing. I was known for doing comb-outs, and my work was very precise and beautiful. 
So when they saw that fantasy looking kind of crazy, it was like, ooh. You didn't have a choice but to fix your name. There you go. That's what I was doing. And I end up winning. The second year? Yes. Wow. Because I stayed up all night working on it. Yeah. The night before the show. Okay. A lady who specialized in fantasies, Margaret O'Dell at the salon, she helped me. She taught me some of her techniques and I used them and created my own style and flair because it's all right to um, copy and learn from other um, creative people and artists, but eventually you want to come into your own. The name of the salon is Artistry of Hair, where hair and art comes together. But on a daily basis, my, my clients are pretty conservative. So I don't get to, you know, do all this creative stuff until it's a show or a competition. This is a proud peacock. We took this to a world competition that was held in Seoul, Korea. Tell um, me you placed with this. We placed, but we didn't win. <sighs> You know, because the competition is so stiff. Yeah. They may you take off bring a it point. All the way around. Like if a hair should be going up instead of down, you know, you can lose a point on anything. If you look, each plume is made out of 100% um, human hair. This is so light when she walks, it kind of moves. Moves with it. The more you, you're styling the fantasy hair, the lighter it should become. You want it to be more efficient in whatever you're doing. So when the show is over, they don't have a headache, they don't have a bad experience. So if you ever have to ask them again, you may get another yes. <laughs> Did you ever think that your art would be in the right museum? Well, I always pictured it in some type of museum. Yeah, I was thinking more of the DIA. I had a photo spread with an exhibit at the DIA once with um, Bruce Weber but it was his exhibit and it was featuring my work he had photographed it. So what does that mean to you to have your work on display you know in this field that you've worked in for over 30 years? Ooh, it's, it's awesome you know just to say that um, your work has been featured in any museum and especially by it being the African American Museum and in my city Detroit it's very close to my heart. Let's stand up and, and walk with it. You know what, hold on, let me put oh, one piece in the front. So I know you said that you like to people watch and come to places like this in the yeah. belt for your yeah. inspiration. So let's take a walk down here and just All right, cool. see what we see. Yeah. <laughs> just looking at the colors and how the colors play into each other, the orange, the greens, you know, there's so many different colors and the, the, the pinks, but they all come together in harmony as one. Nice. So I would take that some type of way and apply it to the hair. Okay. And we're just gonna give you a warm press. Okay. So do you have a preference of doing um, reality hair or um, fantasy hair? Reality. Yeah. You know. That's my bread and butter. Yeah. You know. You know. Now, do you get, like certain times a year, like if someone's going to a costume party or something like that, do you get requests for some of the fantasy hair outside of what you do for the shows and stuff? I do, but sometimes people want to buy it as art. Wow. Because, okay, so talk to me about this plant that you have up there. The, My calla lilies. Yeah, how did that come about? Well, I was creating a fantasy hairstyle for a competition. And so I said, well, I could just make some flowers and put them in a vase, and people wanted to buy them, so. Nice. You know, it's kind of like supply and demand. Yeah. They started demanding them, so I started supplying them. I know, that's right. With so many artists in our city emerging now, you know, this is just a good place to come and just look and, and feed off the energy. Yeah. And not only the energy of the art, but the energy of different people. That are passing through here. Yes. You can pull from all that and get inspiration. Do you see yourself doing this for much longer? Yeah, I'm rounding it up to retire and let the next generation take over. Yeah. You look cool. marvelous. Oh, yes, thank you, darling. thank you. <laughs> oh, I haven't felt my own hair in so long. So just stay true to yourself and step out on the edge a little bit too. 
because if no one like Miss Gail Livingston, she, she doesn't take responsibility for me doing fantasy, but I keep telling her yes. And this is all because of you. Yeah. So every time, you know, people will say, well, they didn't really want to do it. That's not what they want to do. Push people sometimes. So sometimes we don't know what's inside of us unless somebody Yes, and, and challenge yourself. Because if it wasn't for her, I really wouldn't be doing this. That's good. Yeah. There's no place like home. Just tell me what you need. It's alright here. Yeah. In Detroit.